Hi everyone, this is the fourth intro that I'm trying to film and I hope this will be the last one um, but basically I haven't filmed in like two weeks and you just get out of it and it feels weird to even say something and you keep mispronouncing things and whatever which is not new but anyway so my desk is a little bit of a mess right now but I just thought um, you know instead of losing the light because it's now past two o'clock actually is it yeah and um that's when the light starts to um kind of go down in this this sort of season and um i thought i'd rather spend the time filming and actually it's going to be a bit of a chatty video anyway so first of all uh, what's this Oh yeah, this is the, if you're interested, I use this Leighton um, Denny Miracle Mist. It basically helps you to speed up the drying process for the nails. So my nails were looking horrific for uh, almost two weeks. And every time when I do paint my nails just before I start filming, I try to mist it with this spray, uh, which helps me to dry my nails um, faster, which is a bonus when you're making videos. And the other thing that I was going to say, there's a bit of a shadow here and at the moment this is what causes it. I've got two glasses of my polychromous pencils. Actually, check this out. One second. Um, Mason decided one morning to sneak into my studio. This is before we put a lock on it. And um, yeah, he basically decided to bite them a little bit and um, made a little mess here on the desk, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So there is now a lock and um, he can't get in here without me. Okay, so these pencils, I am planning actually to really clean up my desk because at the moment I don't have that much working space. Just uh, a little extra space actually around from what you can see is all I have. The rest is all kind of diaries and pens and pencils, books. My entire um, desk is covered with all sorts of things, sketchbooks um, for open projects and things like um, for swatching, palettes, whatnot. So um, I bought that IKEA, what is it called? Rascog, Roscog, Rascog, <laughs> um, trolley which has three kind of compartments in there. I got the black one, and um, I haven't had a chance yet, but I'm looking forward to putting it together and clear out everything that I have on my desk into that trolley so it will be mobile and I can kind of find a little uh, space in the studio to move it about and when I need to use something I can um, pick it out and now that I have a lock on my um, on my door I don't need to worry that Mason will just randomly come in and pick things out of there and make a huge mess so that's all fantastic what's next um, I just feel so good <laughs> I think I'm struggling to actually get those words out of me because I, I I don't want to jinx anything it's it's a weird one but basically Mason has been going to the new nursery now um for a couple of weeks and he started his um you know he had a few um settling in sessions and then um he started his basically um normal kind of hours there and Oh, he loves it so much. Um, all the issues that we had with the, and probably still have with the other nursery, um, there's just nothing like that with this one. But oh my gosh, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. And it's um, it just feels so refreshing. And yeah, I had no idea. When I first started looking for nurseries, I had no idea how bad some nurseries can be. Uh, versus the good ones you know once you experience a good nursery you understand what is a good nursery um, I thought I knew that before but clearly not so anyways I'll keep it at that the other thing talking about relaxation I've got a nice candle I'll just show you here it's the um, rose scented candle burning and my room feels so relaxing and it just feels so good um, it's um, it's just so rewarding when you find the right 
place for your child and your heart feels at content and happy. Oh, I don't want to get emotional here, but um, yeah, it just feels good. So I'm just trying to share with you what's going on here. I look a bit of a mess, so I haven't appeared in front of the camera for a while, but I think this is going to be um, possible very soon because I have more time now. Um, and yeah, so I think I will make an appearance soon and do possibly the November catch-up video, maybe in front of the camera. We'll see. You let me know in the comment box um, what you prefer, actually. Um, a chatty video like this um, for ketchups or do you prefer seeing the artist <laughs> behind it as well uh, I'd love to know that okay so it's way past um, lunch hour but I'm buzzing with energy and I feel so good that I actually decided to um, spend time filming this video rather than having lunch and I'm not too hungry so I'm just gonna have a little fruit tea here and in my favorite cup actually um this has like these i don't want to tip it over obviously um but it's got these lovely like watercolor swatches and they all are like polka dots and it's a beautiful rainbow and then even inside the cap around the rim um you get them as well which is just so inspiring because i love watercolors and i have been into watercolors for you know a long time now a couple of years I tend to drop something I get into once I get bored with it, but watercolor is now definitely a big part of my life. And actually, um, for the two weeks that I took a break to um, film the videos while my family was here, uh, they actually have left yesterday. And um, yeah, it's um, I have decided to take up a new project which is super super exciting uh, I can't share it with you just yet but um, I am I incredibly excited about it so soon enough you will find out but coming back to lunch um, this is what I wanted to share with you because these are amazing one day my husband brought these um, it's basically a vegan brownie and it just tastes amazing first of all the presentation is pretty cool it's by this brand called ds and um you can google when you can get where you can get them but you get them in this beautiful kind of yellow uh, and black design sleek design box which i really like you know great packaging and there are two pieces of brownie there and they are literally the most amazing brownies i've ever had they just melt on your tongue and they're just amazing so so delicious and i was so surprised that they're vegan because i'm not uh, a vegan diet follower or lifestyle follower but um i certainly appreciate when vegan food tastes amazing because you can't put things like you know um eggs or dairy or whatever in there so they have to come up with other uh, ingredients to balance that softness and the you know lusciousness uh, of the of the produce so it's amazing what I do is I always keep the boxes and I then put my uh, watercolors in there so this is actually from the um, was it from this one yeah from from this um, painting that I did so the very limited um, color palette painting and it just feels so good and like I keep them in my cupboard um, sort of boxes next to each other where if I want to work on a project I just separate the colors into a few anyways I, I uh, see we have been chatting for uh, almost 10 minutes now so apart from that I just wanted to do some art actually and show you a couple of things. So I pulled out my, um, what's it called? My uh, Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook. This is the Mr. Darcy in, I'll put the, the name down here. It just kind of escaped my uh, memory. But basically um, it's so good to have 
this type of thing for if you are setting up a business or if you're working, if you are an artist, if you have any projects, if you have any ideas that you want to put into here. So you just use different inserts for different purposes. So I've got like a diary one. I've got some uh, working ones for swatches. I've got this one, which is the um, peerless insert of the two palettes that I have. Um, I've got like random kind of um, swatches here that I just stick them in there. I feel that a bit of creative mass always helps when creating. So you need to create and look at creativity to, to continue creating. Does that make any sense? I hope so. So anyways, um, I've got this uh, spare insert. It's actually not great. So I'm not going to um, share with you what brand it is, but I've bought it on Etsy. I actually have a video from one of the older videos where I explain everything about it. Um, so if you're very curious, you, I guess you could find that. But um, I had this one lying around. It was a faulty one that was sent to me. So I thought to make use of it. What I'm using it for now is just like a little quick... Um, you know, just sort of drafting, really. I don't usually do that, but for this type of thing, I had an idea what I wanted to create today, but I just wasn't sure exactly how it would look. So I thought I'll just um, do a draft. So um, for that, I have used the Polychromos uh, in Indigo, Dark Indigo, and it's great to draw with. The rest okay. of the illustration I will not comment today just because I want to make breaks and have my brownie and tea and um, I'll speed it up for you and um, do it that way. So I hope you enjoy it and we will catch up at the end of this uh, video and I will talk you through. Okay, I feel so much better now after the brownie. Um, so, one thing I wanted to say. Oh yes, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the intro, but um, I am going to use the White Knights um, palette today. And the reason being is because these are wood colors that I absolutely adore. They are cheap as chips compared to other brands of the same quality. So off camera, I have been experimenting again with different watercolors. Um, and um, yeah, and I thought today I want to, to use these ones because I haven't painted for a while with them and they just, they are gorgeous watercolors. They're super bright. They are um, very intense. For example, um, even their indigo, you can see how luscious and deep it is. The paper that I have used for the swatches is the um, Arches, and I think this was their rough paper. So the colors are extremely bright on Arches paper. So, as I have said before, I do want to have a limited palette still. And I think what I will do is I'll pick a couple of colors and I'll probably tone them down with indigo as I go. Now, this is this is just a draft, but to be honest with you, I actually quite quite like the draft. I think I'm going to keep it in the draft paper. Sorry if it's a little bit all over the place today, but um I just need to get back in the um, mindset of having some time to myself finally. Okay, I'll uh, zoom you in so you, there you go, you can see it a little bit better. By the way, I just wanted to say that um, in case you're surprised of um, the look of this palette, this is the original palette from a long time ago. This palette is really super old. And what I've done is I have clipped out the plastic insert that there was and basically just um, stuck as many colors that I um, could 
you won't find a palette that will carry that many uh, colors and this is a lovely little or well, it's not little it's actually big um, palette insert that came with that palette um, so that's why it looks like that okay I'm going to start with indigo and the rest um, you will see Okay, so essentially, I think today what it's going to be about is how to um, kind of work on a draft which doesn't take you too much time, but at the same time gives you the idea. For example, when I was talking about uh, muted color palette and things like that, I had something completely different in mind. And I'll show you from my previous uh, sketchbook. Now, so these are the watercolors that I worked here and you can see how very muted it is compared to that. It is quite difficult to achieve that muted look with this palette just because the colors are so beautifully bright. And in fact, I tried to mute down the, where is this? This color, which is the rose, it's from the new colors. But you can see how gorgeously vibrant and fiery it is. I tried to mute it down with the indigo, but of course, being a blue that just created the purple, which, um, you know, wasn't the color that I was going for, but um, it's sort of, I ended up liking it in the end. And it works really well with this type of a green that I mixed, which I think I used let's see what's this color here is it the green light yes it's i think it's the green light that i used with um with indigo so the green light is this one so muting it down with the indigo gave me this beautiful kind of um, color here and then I try to change the tones by adding more water that's essentially all I have done then I mixed up um, kind of try to mix up a grayish color but it's more of a purpley color right here and I did realize in the end that I need to pull out my neutrals palette which I do have separately uh, created here so you can buy this palette separately it's a small uh, 12 colors I think yes 12 color palette and then all you do is you take this um, insert out which is like transparent and you just load it with whatever colors you want that's what I have done I've taken out the doubles that I had some of them had um, quite opaque colors which I took out of these two palettes anyway and that's my neutrals palette so there is a Payne's grey right here and there is a um, neutral black. So I could use those two colors to bring down the vibrancy of them. And I think what I will show you, because I um, just wanted to show how I would approach something like playing with the color scheme. Although I do like the look of this and it's not what I expected it to be to begin with. What you can do is you can next to it play with other colors for example if you wanted to um, take any other pink i'm going to take carmine this time and put it into here into this corner and then this time i'm going to take Payne's gray which is a lovely gray color doesn't have as much blue in there and you can see it still kind of pulls towards the 
purple, right? But not as much. So if I'm going to add more of it, we're going to gray, get that very deep kind of gray violet color. Um, so that would be something like this. So I can do a little swatch here to play around with it. And if I wanted to, if I'm going to go ahead actually with the same color next to it like so, but this time with that neutral black, which doesn't have any blue in there, that was a bit too much, we shouldn't see um, that's still a little bit much, so you can see here it's quite dark, it's too much of the black. Let me just zoom out a touch so you can see a bit more like that. So again, I would go back into Carmine. I'm just trying to get the muted down. So that's quite pretty. Definitely muted down color. Oh. <laughs> I definitely need to clear up my desk. And then if I wanted to lighten it, what you do with watercolor is you just add more water. So I'm going to add a drop of water and then there you go, so that's a lot lighter. It's the same color as this one, but with more water. And then what you can do is, um, I'm going to actually show you the original, so you can see what the original, oh God, disaster. So this is what the original looks like. This is the carmine without black. This is carmine with black and this is watered out. So you can create muted colors. So I'm going to try mix up a few greens. Now, let's see. So I've got the sub green, which I really, really like. It's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to put that sub green here. It's a gorgeous color. It's one of my favorite sub greens. And I'm going to go into, actually, into Payne's Grey this time. Because it has blue in there. So it's nice and kind of, I think that color would work best here. So that would be a leaf for it. Like that. That works really well. And then for this one, I might add a touch bit of something like a brighter green. And I think that could do nicely over here. This one needs like a really grayed out, like a grayish kind of color. So I'm going to go in with a darker green and definitely um, neutral black so this is very dark at the minute but if I take the same color that I mixed up and I put a little bit in the corner and then literally mostly using water that's the color I'm going to get and it's very fitting if I wanted to darken it up a little I could do that then um, we've got a few others here actually I've got just one so for this one I would do a very similar thing, but I would want to use a brighter base. I'm going to go into this, which is quite a bright base. There you go, you can see that. And I'm going to blend with what I already had there. And I'm going to get this green color, which works really well with this pinkish. If it's too much, again, what I would do is I'll use a droplet of water and just pull out this color to create a very, very kind of pale pastel color if I wanted to to do that. So essentially this is you know how I would mix colors to try and keep it within kind of like a muted limited color palette. There you go I hope you can see the colors. This is not a watercolor paper 
but like I said, I'm using it for drafting and that's all I need to experiment on. I don't need to have best paper because I know that if it looks good on this paper, on watercolor paper, it will look even better. So for me, that's good enough. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if it um, was a little bit all over the place, but like I said, um, I just need to get back into the routine. And yeah, I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day and see you soon.